This is Coogan Cassis Rifle TV in association with Macclesfield Marbella. We're in Leeds, final press conference. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds. Yeah? Are you a, Leeds, that's what they're doing, Are you a Leeds fan? I'm a big Leeds fan, actually, especially when I'm up here. Definitely. Um, I only asked you about that, about Amagasa. You don't even warrant an interview. Yeah. What did you ask? I no, I said to you, like, would he still have been considered an opponent if he still lost the fight to Rigondale but hadn't dropped him? Uh, That's yeah, what probably. I was He's world ranked, so, yeah. yeah, maybe. But obviously, that, that what, what I'm trying to do for Josh is, is, I don't think he gets the respect that he deserves from fight fans because I think they look at the crowd as they do. They like to attack casuals or just people that don't read and watch boxing 24-7. And they say, oh, he's just a massive ticket seller. But I believe he can really fight. And when we made the Brunker fight, people said, oh, that's an interesting fight. He'll lose that, he'll get knocked out. He won every round. And I think he got a little bit of respect. And when we made the Amagasa fight, the response was, blimey, that's a real fight. And, and the reason there was that response is because the hardcores have watched him against Rigondeau. And it was a great fight. You've only got to look at the size of him. You've got to look at the team he's here with. They're here to win. Do you know what I mean? And uh, this is a real tough fight. And by the way, Warrington, he's bang up for it. I just said goodbye to him. He said, I'm going to knock this kid out, you know. And uh, I'm excited. I'm really excited about that fight. And I'm also equally, probably more excited even, about Hall Guerrero. Mm. It's going to be an absolute war. So, yeah, coming on to Hall Guerrero, mm. obviously, it's final them later for Lee Haskins. Yeah. Lee Haskins fights next month yeah. in Wales. Um, if he comes through that, and obviously... We're assuming Lee Haskins will come through mm -hmm. uh, Ivan Morales. Yeah. Uh, how quickly do you think they'll force they that mandatory? To, um, Haskins took an exception uh, to take the fight against Morales because he waited too long. So he has to fight within 90 days of his fight, which is really? great for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, again, it's, you know, it'll be a 75-25 split, so we're not in a great position. But I don't mind where the fight is who it's with, who promotes it. I just want Stuart Hall to get another crack at a world title. And he'll beat Lee Haskins as well. So, but he's got the tougher fight on Saturday mm. against Guerrero. That's tougher than all these fights. Guerrero is bang up for it. Again, his team, Sean Gibbons, all, you know, they're here in force. They're here because they believe they're going to win. Might end up on Channel 5. What, the fight? Yeah. It's fine, doesn't it? Yeah, it's fine. Um, obviously, Dave Ryan uh, mm -hmm. in against Haikili. Yeah, Martin Aguilar, it's uh, for the vacant Commonwealth title. His old title. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's the mandatory for that title. Good chance for him to get back to winning ways. Uh, Martin Wolf got a really tough fight against uh, Rudy Enkara, who is a Spaniard who beat the European champion. Um, had a really good fight with Oleg Yafamovich of Ukraine, who's a real tough super feather as well. So, probably toughest fight of Wolf's career so far. And really want to get this out of the way and then start pushing him towards a British title, you know. I mean, Liam Walsh against uh, Troy James, I think that's now happening on April 30. We've been waiting for an age for that fight. Um, so hopefully that show still goes ahead and that fight happens. Um, so yeah, it's a good opportunity for Wardy, a real fight for him. There's a couple of really interesting ones on the undercard. Hinch and Chamberlain. Yeah, I mean, I think what I'm trying to do now is the, the younger prospects, I'm trying to match them against people that are actually there to win because there's only so much you can learn against journeymen, no disrespect to journeymen. So for instance, you look at the, uh, the likes of Jake Paul, who's boxing Colin Farricker, who had a really good fight with Dion Juma at our Copper Box show. I watched the fight, he's a tough kid, he comes to win. And then um, Russell Henshaw against Isaac Chamberlain. So these are real two really tough fights at early stage in your career, but you need those to develop. Even Jeff Saunders, he's boxing Mark McRae. People can look at Mark McRae's record and you know he, he loses most time, but he can punch. He's dangerous, and you got to, you got to test yourself. And um, you know, I feel like we need to start doing that more with the younger guys coming through, and, and probably a little bit earlier. And to be honest with you, when you're playing the dough, like I am, I want to see them in proper fights. I don't just want to pay the money for them to go in bosh all over. Who learns what? Nothing. No one gets entertainment in the crowd. The fighters don't learn nothing. Yeah, they get an easy payday, which is nice, but, you know. Leeds should be rocking Saturday Leeds night. Leeds will be rocking. I mean, again, after Saturday night at the O2, it would almost be a little bit of a downer if it wasn't anywhere else but Leeds. You know, I think we'll have close to 7,000 in now. The atmosphere is going to be absolutely electric. Josh Warrington's done like, 
I think nearly 3,000 tickets on his own, personally. He's a ticket seller, right? He's a massive ticket. That's all. Can't fight. Just a ticket seller. So, um, no, I'm excited. And it's a really good card as well. Those two, those two, you know, main events or main event and co-feature are great. And then straight over to the States for Swifty. Absolutely. Fighting Pedraza, mate. I can't, I can't wait for that fight. That's I really believe he's going to do it. Yeah, he's gone today. No. So, uh, he's in, spoke to him last night. Swifty's in great shape. He's great had to place. wait a while for this, isn't he? He has, but I think timing's everything. It's not just in boxing, in life. Opportunities come around, you have to seize them. And I just feel like, you know, he's had a little bit of illness in the past and he had kidney stones, stuff like that, little injuries. And, and this is the first time he's been absolutely fiery. Mm. And, you know, he had a great performance to become the mandatory. I just feel like, you know, some, sometimes, listen, Pedraz is a very good talent, so it's a 50-50 fight, but... I don't know, I've really got a feeling Swifty's going to do it. Certainly hope so. Mm-hmm. Um, I see a picture the other day of uh, Joe Gallagher and Paul Smith with... Elena uh, Christensen. Elena I know, Christensen see their faces. In, in the gym. It was like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was right about that. Um, right, two things I've got to ask you about, which actually have an impact on my life, that's why I need to know these things. Is there any more developments on Joshua's first defence? date, venue, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, we're looking at possibly the June 25th mm. at the O2. Um, we're talking to opponents at the moment. I think you'll get an announcement maybe at the weekend. Maybe. But I'll let you know, Coop, you know, so you can plan your personal life. No, it's, it's important. Is it? Yeah, it is. And then, obviously, the fight you were talking about earlier on, Possibly That's being on an undercard of that fight. Is that going to go on the undercard? Groves Murray. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Groves Murray is, that's what I want. I want that as chief support for the next Joshua card. I, I love the fight. I love the fight. Just trying to get it done at the moment. Okay. Keep them posted. I will do. The other one is Tony Bellew. Mm-hmm. Any more developments? We, we're speaking to Goodison. We're, they're looking to relay their pitch and we're just trying to work around it at the moment. We're running out of time a little bit, um, but I think today we'll make a decision either way. We might go a few weeks later in Liverpool. We could put it on the Joshua card. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, just... Is Benny up? Will Benny be up for that? No, listen, we want to do it at Goodison. Everyone wants to do it at Goodison, but they can't interrupt their pitch lane because there's a, one company that relays all the pitch and they're booked in for slots for all the clubs and you just you can't be changed. So it's just, can we do it in time? We need to get the right licences from the council. You actually would have seen a few the, on Twitter. There's, you know, the letters that go up around houses and stadiums when they ask for planning permissions or any kind of permissions from the council and it's, they're all up around Goodison. Mm. requesting for the licence to stage the fight so people have been tweeting me though so I don't know uh, will it be at Goodison probably 50-50 at the moment but you know Bill Kenwright us Tony we want to make it work but it's got to be everything's got to be right and we are running out of time a little bit um, but we'll see but just imagine at the O2 what a card that would be Joshua versus Hector Via 2 yeah, yeah. First no uh, actually uh we're looking at uh, if Jason Gavin can get a win, because obviously he's coming off the Dave, Dave Allen defeat. Yeah. If Gavin can get a win, he's definitely uh, there or thereabouts. And um, Emmanuel Elio. Is he, yeah, he wants yeah, revenge. Yeah, no, he's, he hasn't boxed since Joshua's debut, but you know he might have a little comeback, and, uh, and hopefully you know, that will force him in the top 15 with the IBF, and we can look to make that fight on June 25th. Groves Murray, Belu Yakubu. I don't think anyone will mind. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Someone. Someone on my. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you watched. Did you watch IFL TV yesterday? Oh, I got sent it for it. Was that for the Anthony Joshua and Eddie Hearn press conference? No, it was a uh, Frank Warren's press conference for the announced Klitschko Fury being I on the I saw some nation. footage and all they were talking about was Anthony Joshua. I didn't know if it was a press conference to talk about Anthony Joshua. To be honest, your name did come up quite did, a bit. Did it? I yeah. saw a few. Someone sent me a link of the press conference. And someone sent me a link of Mick Hennessy's interview, and I did watch some of, of that yeah. press conference. It was um, it's a bit like you know when you tune into UK Gold and like you watch an old episode of Neighbours from the 90s. It's a bit like that. Like Frank Warren was like wearing Harold Bishop's whistle, 
Um, Hennessy was in like some moody Lacoste top that was tucked into a suit. And the backdrop looked like it was designed by my six-year-old daughter. But, you know, listen, there's levels and there's levels. You know, there's Champions League and there's Ryman's League. So, um, you know, and, and actually it's, it's, people talk about the look and the feel, the product. Everything's translated from, from the look, from the press conferences, from the backdrops, all the way through to the event. So you see us, we're a million dollars all the time. You go to our shows, everything, the production, the music, the lighting, every, it's, it's the real deal. And then, you, you know, you see those press conferences, it just translates all the way through. Um, I saw Mick Hennessy's interview, fucking hell. These people, they hate me. They absolutely hate me. Um, he called me, I think, a arsehole or, I don't know, old silver spoon boy. But the fact is, this silver spoon boy is tonking him all over the gap. I mean, like, you want to give me stick about being a, uh, a silver spoon boy, but I'm running circles around you, everybody. So you can't be that great. Um, I don't know. I think the whole role model thing, and, and role model, a role model to you might not be a role model to me. So, no one's right, it's just that's my opinion. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, I, I see Billy Joe you know, talking about, you know, he's, he's had a tough upbringing and went on to win the World Heavyweight title. Fantastic achievement. But just for the way that he conducts himself, it's not for me. It might, might be for someone else, but just not for me. So, you know, that, that conversation's been done now, but I just find it fascinating that these people just can't stop talking about Anthony Joshua can't stop talking about me and you know in the press comments I think um, Tyson's dad said we're not on the billboards yeah we haven't got the big sponsorship deals that's because poor promotion and poor image it's the basic rules of, of, of marketing and promotion it's not it's not rocket science I'm all for being real and all that sort of stuff but you can't just sit there and just abuse and, and confront the media that your son doesn't get to respect it, you know. It's like, I Do you know. not think John Fury did have a little point about certain like things Fury, he was listen, saying? I really enjoy John Fury's interviews, right? I think, he, I think a lot of what he says is, is right, but at the same time, you know, I know people talk about they don't want to play the game and they don't want to be part of the system, but sometimes, you know, and I'm not talking about being a yes man, but Image is important. You know, the way you conduct yourself is important, in my view. Maybe it's but not you also bit. said that you wouldn't ever tell someone, whether it be Tyson Fury or whoever, not to ever be themselves. No, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. I just think there's a time and a place for stuff. That's all. And I think that when you become world heavyweight champion, you have a responsibility to behave in a certain way. You don't have to change. You don't have to suddenly start talking differently or not speaking your mind, but just... Things change, you know, you become that person where kids might look up to, and whether you like it or not, that's life. You, you've achieved that, you've got a responsibility. You know, part of me admires the fact that they say, you know, we're, we're ourselves, we speak the truth. And again, listen, I like John's interviews, and I like Peter Fury. Listen, I've, I've, Peter Fury's a gentleman. You know, I've been around his house for a couple of years, he's a lovely man with a lovely family. But I'm doing our stuff with Anthony Joshua. And don't forget that a week ago, Charles Martin was the greatest thing since sliced bread. Tyson Fury said, this guy's a real deal, he'll knock Anthony Joshua out. In fact, I've had a grand on it. So it's not, oh, what a great performance from Anthony Joshua. It's just apparently now Charles Martin wasn't as good as it people thought he was. So there's no credit, but it doesn't matter. This is all good. You know, I don't, I don't, the difference is when these people get interviewed, you know, Mick and Frank, it's like there's cardiovascular alert, you know. But they should be smart enough to know it's just a game, it's just a bit of fun. Everybody's talking, so it's all good. I don't take it personally. No, mix, like, I mean, the bitterness is phenomenal. But, I don't know. Maybe I have that effect on people. But we're doing our thing with Anthony Joshua. We've got the perfect fighter, the perfect brand, and we will go on and do our thing. And they will fight, they will fight. Because we believe it's an easy fight, and they believe it's an easy fight. So that's good news for fight fans. <laughs> Well, to be honest, that's all fight fans are interested in, whether those sort of fights are made. Yeah, but, but the little bits around the, the corner, it's good. It's good fun. He says I'm Silver Spoon Boy. He says I'm a dickhead. I said he looks like, dresses like Harold Bishop. You know, I mean, all these things, it's just, it's just, just banter juice, Coog, isn't it? Is Joshua Fury the biggest fight available in world boxing today? Ooh, good 
question. Unification heavyweight fight. Between two Brits. Is there a bigger fight that can be made? Well, I guess Pacquiao, Mayweather rematch. I mean, no, but you're talking about on a global scale. Yeah. For, for Britain, then, you know, yeah. but, you know, don't forget, um, I think Fury's been on US TV a couple of times. Joshua's just started. And we'll, we'll announce a new deal for him in the next week or so. So we've got a lot of building to do in other territories. Um, I think you'll see Josh potentially boxing in the Far East um, in the next 12 to 18 months. Really? Yeah. And I think you may see him boxing in America. But at the moment, we're focusing on the UK. But the Fury fight is it's a natural fight. And, and even the Hay fight. You know, Hay fight is, I think, maybe bigger, but without the unification. So, you know, I think Hay's got a much bigger profile than Fury and a stronger profile, but he doesn't have the belts. So... It's all about the belts. But I think, you know, Joshua against Fury, it should be mad, wouldn't it? It'd be mad. And, and you know, when I watch that press conference and I watch Tyson Fury talk, he's, for a promoter, he is, you know, probably fantastic to work with because he's very entertaining, very funny. And then some of the stuff he does just, just goes a little bit OTT, but it's, that's good because it creates controversy. It's great for the Joshua fight, it's just not for me. But if you talk, you've got to be able to back it up in the ring. Yeah. He has backed up in the ring, I suppose. hundred percent. So. You'll never ever see me not give him anything but credit for the Klitschko win, ever. You know that. It was a great performance. I just think Joshua KO's him and in star. And they think they knocked Joshua out in a round, apparently. So. We shall see. Good times, my friend. Good times. Good times for boxing. And, uh, you know, you just... Keep doing what you're doing. Exactly. Everyone else keeps do. doing what they're doing. Yeah, I don't take things too seriously. You know, if you did, I'd probably have a mental breakdown. If I read the tweet, if, you know, if, if I watched these interviews and then I can't believe what he called me. You know, Tyson said... Do you ever get bitter? Bitter. I probably will do. You know, one thing I will say is perhaps Frank wasn't bitter at my age. Because... I haven't actually seen the interview yet that you did with him, but someone said you asked him if he's bitter and he went on about 20 minutes while he's not bitter. But I think this business can make you bitter. And I doubt whether he was five or six years in, whether he was bitter. But he is now, but he might not even realise it. But it's a shit business. And maybe it's just turned him that way. Right, Eddie Hearn. I'm staying in Leeds. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. shooting back. I'm staying in Leeds, so... Be at the way in tomorrow. That's one zero. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up with you over the weekend. But we will. Thank you, Edward.